Hello to everybody. Welcome to our webinar concerning hygiene powder products uh, for cattle. My name is Klaus Andersen and I'm sales director in Vilofos. Today's presentation will be given by my colleague Jan Storgaard, who is one of our specialists into hygiene and biosecurity. Jan has a background as biochemist and worked with the area for more than 20 years. We can't see you or hear you, but it is possible during the webinar to ask questions in the chat. We will follow up and answer after the presentation. The session will be recorded and will be sent to you afterwards together with the presentation. If there are no objections to the recording, it is considered as an approval. And then I will wish you a nice webinar. Enjoy. Jan, please, the word is yours. Well, thank you, Klaus, uh, and thank you to everybody who signed up for this uh, webinar today. Uh, I'm so happy about that. The, the topic for today is going to be, as mentioned, uh, hygiene powder products for cattle, and also with a bit of focus on our own product, uh, Stenosan F. Uh, when, we, when I say hygiene powder products for cattle, uh, the thing I will mentioned in this presentation is going to be products that are used for uh, in cow cubicles and also in uh, calf boxes or hutches. Next slide, please. And so what possibilities do we have kind of overall when we are dealing with those hygiene powder products? Well, you know, for laying areas like cow cubicles or the calf boxes. Well, first of all, we can go for the simple mechanism by just absorbing water, try to keep the environment and the surface dry. And of course, that makes kind of good sense because it's known if we have uh, pathogenic bacteria, they will always be in an animal environment, but they need to be at a certain le level in order to actually infect and cause diseases. So if we can keep a dry environment and we can keep the level of bacteria below this threshold, maybe we can prevent infection and diseases. So that's the idea. Of course, we can also choose the more the more direct effect by choosing, you know, uh, hygiene products that have uh, biocidal effects that are registered as a biocide that will disinfect and kill. And finally, I just want to add this extra point today and emphasize uh, one of the most uh, damaging waste products we see in animal production in general, in general, being ammonia and ammonia is caused is known to cause increased infection and diseases and also to lower production results especially for poultry and pigs in this presentation i will not focus too much on that but more the impact on ammonia on the skin next slide please and so when we look at those uh, drying hygiene powder products the, the idea is, as I said, we want to keep moisture low, we want to keep it dry, we want to prevent the growth. Makes good sense. Uh, those products are usually based on either limestone, uh, bentonite, uh, silicates, or even sometimes we see pectin fibers as well. Having said this, uh, if we look more into to details, my experience is over the last 20 years that more than 90% of all the powder products on the market are based on limestone. And if we go and look into each product and we look at the composition, we often see that the concentration of the limestone is above 90 or even above 95%. So it is the major component in those products. Then sometimes you also see, you know, some fragrance to give a nice smell or maybe even some coloring. Well, that is the normal situation in the market with the different brands. And we have to emphasize, of course, that none of those uh, raw materials mentioned here have any biocidal effect whatsoever. It is meant for drying. The rec recommended application is usually around 50 to 100 grams per square meters, or if it is in a cow cubicle, per cow cubicle in the rear end. Next slide, please. And so I thought, talking about the drying effect of those hygiene power products, I thought it could be interesting to compare 
with other materials that farmers are using, for instance, in a cow cubicle or in a calf box. And then I thought about the, you know, the natural uh, bedding types that farmers are often also using. And I find a couple of studies where they have investigated the water binding capacity of different bedding materials. And uh, one of those studies I have listed in this table here, and I have compared it with the water binding capacity of those typical limestone based uh, drying agents. And as you can see, the first uh, line up here, uh, straw uh, was uh, measured to be able to bind 1.2 liter of water per kilo of straw. And for cottage straw, uh, we see a much higher water binding capacity, uh, 3.38. Uh, and that is mainly due to the fact that when we cut straw, we open the structure, we open all the small cavities that are capable of, of absorbing water, and that increases, of course, uh, the capacity. For wooden chips, we see in this uh, study here 2.26 uh, liters of water per kilo of wooden chips, and for turf, we see 1.64. So quite nice water binding capacities variating a bit uh, between the different ones. But the interesting part, uh, I think, is uh, the fact that if we measure the water binding capacity of the limestone based drying agents, they usually come up around uh, 350 milliliter of uh, water per kilo of product, meaning 0 0.35, as it says here. So, so this is uh, surprisingly significantly lower compared to the natural bedding times. And then we can go on for the, on the next line and we can say, OK, what what does it take to absorb one liter of water, for instance? And you can see again, we have all different numbers out here. And again, I just want to emphasize that for the limestone based uh, drying agents, we need uh, 2.886 uh, kilo of, uh, of product in order to bind one liter of water. And as you can see for the rest of the natural bedding types, uh, mainly it's, it's significantly lower. Then we can go and say, OK, what is the cost of all of this? What is the average price per kilo? And uh, don't don't push me too hard with the prices on the natural bedding types. It's may, it may vary from country to country and time to time. But just for a comparison, uh, please accept it. Uh, so for straw, uh, 15 euro cents per kilo. Cottage straw, uh, a bit more expensive, of course, 17 euro cent per kilo. Wooden chips, 42 euro cent, and uh, turf is uh, for, uh, 32 euro cent per kilo. And uh, an average price, when I look over the market in total for any brand that is limestone based dyeing agents, the price is around uh, 54 euro cent per kilo. And so now we have the water binding capacity and we have the price per kilo. Then we can calculate what is the cost of absorbing one liter of water. And for straw, it's 12 euro cents, cottage straw even less because of the high water binding capacity, five euro cents, wooden chips a bit higher, 18, the turf also a bit higher, 20. But then look at the limestone based drying agents, 1.53 euros to bind uh, one liter of uh, water. So again, uh, uh, even maybe 10 times higher the uh, cost uh, of binding this water compared to the natural bedding types. And then also finally on this slide, I just want to emphasize that the normal recommended use is, as I said, 50 to 100 grams per square meters. And that corresponds, according to uh, the test, corresponds to 18 to 36 milliliter of liquid per square meters. And that, I guess, is the same as a small shot glass, right? So it's not a large amount. Next slide, please. And so if we try to transfer, transfer those studies, those trials here, into a, a cow barn and we look at uh, the ca a cow cubicle again. Let's take a dry summer day. This is the time of the year where the least uh, moist and water is added or, or, or um, it is appearing in each uh, cow cubicle. A wet uh, autumn day will of course deliver much more moisture and, and, and water. But let's just take a dry summer day. Here it has been uh, measured that approximately 250 milliliter of moisture will be added or formed in each cow cubicle per day. OK, if we need to keep that moisture in control, we need to keep it away, we want to bind it, we want to avoid bacteria from growing, how much is needed? And for straw, we need 208 
uh, grants to bind those 250 million. And this have, has a cost of uh, 3 euro cents. Wooden chip, we need uh, 110 uh, grants to, to bind 250 uh, million, and it has a cost of 5 euro cent. And for the limestone based drying agents, we need 750 grams per cow cubicle per day, and it has a cost of uh, 38 euro cent. Next slide, please. Also, when we are uh, talking about uh, controlling bacterial level, controlling infection level, controlling diseases uh, with the drying effects, we need, to, we need to understand that even though we dry completely, there is still going to be pathogenic bacteria uh, that will be in the environment that will not be dead. They will survive. They can do that for years in a completely dry environment. And then if one day suddenly a bit of moisture comes into contact with those bacteria, they can within a short period of time, maybe 24 hours or so, grow large enough in number to actually cause infection and maybe high somatic cell count, whatever. So it is a, a kind of a ticking bump. And if you add water, it will explode. So, so having said that, it makes some kind of sense also to consider using something that will actually kill. Next slide, please. And and uh, and here uh, there are some rules. If you want to use uh, or sell and market uh, a biocide, for instance, in Europe or the US, in order to do that legally, you need you need to have a registration. You need to prove from efficacy tests and also safety towards humans, environment, and animals. All of that you need to prove in order to get a registration. And I here I just have to emphasize uh, we are proud about that, but sterosinef is the only uh, powder biocide that is allowed to be sold as a biocide in the European Union and also in the US. Uh, so the, definitely sterosinef is a biocide, highly effective, and definitely it is uh, allowed to be sold and registered. The good thing about this uh, product sterosinef is that it is not sensitive to organic matter, it is not sensitive to feces manure, bedding, moisture levels, uh, urine, whatever. The effect will be there no matter what. And what we usually can achieve with, with, uh, with this is two applications per week, maybe in the cow cubicles or the calf boxes, we will be able to provide a constant uh, biocidal effect that will keep uh, the pathogenic level low. Next slide, please. So just to summarize up the two first uh, points in this presentation, the drying and or the killing, I think it's uh, for me it's quite uh, clear that that's um, I know there is a long tradition of losing of using uh, drying powder products uh, for the for the laying areas, uh, especially cow cubicles. But according to me, if you can find a bedding that will stay in the bed and not run out too much much on the floor. I would really recommend that uh, over the drying agents because uh, the water capacity, binding capacity is significantly higher and the kilo price is lower. But that also means that uh, for all those hiking power products, it's actually very difficult for us to compete with this water binding capacity of uh, the natural beddings. Stanus and F can, can not compete with the water binding capacity of, of a natural bedding. But then we should use it for something else. And that is why I, in this presentation, emphasize the need for, for a biocide. So if we can combine a natural bedding with a powerful water binding capacity that will keep the growth to low and a certain level, combine that with a biocide that would actually kill, I believe we have the best uh, combination. Next slide, please. Okay, the last point in my initial uh, slide was about uh, ammonia. And uh, before we, we go into details with ammonia in those uh, and control of that with the use of uh, hiking powder products, I just want to give you some facts on, on ammonia. It is uh, chemically, ammonia is a highly alkaline and corrosive product. It has a pH value of uh, 13, and that is also the reason why if in the airspace and inhaled in the, the airways, you will have a breakdown of mucosal tissue and you will have a significant increase in, in pulmonary uh, diseases. 
possible, it affects the skin, it breaks down the surface of the skin, makes it much more easy for bacteria to infect and cause diseases. Finally, because again of the high pH value, when, when you are in an airspace with ammonia, it will irritate the eye and, and the eyes becomes red. Also, in fact, it's, uh, not so many know this, but, but uh, ammonia is also a neurotoxin. And when you are in, in, in a room with ammonia at a certain level and you inhale, it will be taken up directly from the nasal cavity and into the brain where it will function as a neurotoxin. And here it is actually believed in animals to deprive uh, you know, uh, the, the health and the resistance of animals and also the production results in general. Also, when ammonia is taken up into the body, it will uh, decrease the activity of the immune system and thereby potentially uh, lead to, to more diseases. So in general, uh, you could say that, that it is, has an overall impact on animal health and also lowers the production results, especially for poultry and pigs. We don't see quite the same effect on cattle in, in, in general, at least not in terms of the production results, but we do see a quite negative effect on the surface of the skin, for instance, on the eye. Next slide, please. Uh, I just forgot one thing. Uh, please go back. So just one more thing. When all this is said, uh, this harmful effect on animals, this is of course the same on humans. So ammonia will cause an equal uh, damage towards the health of humans. And that is also the reason why uh, there is you know, rules and guidance from the governments around the world that says that a maximum of 25 ppm, ppm of ammonia in the airspace is allowed in a working environment. Uh, and if you go into a, a cattle barn, you know, a, a cow barn, and you measure, and it is a day where there is not a lot of the side wind, for instance, that maybe the air is kind of still, we can actually measure something between 10 ppm and up to around 25 ppm. So even though it's not as high as in poultry and pig, uh, it is still at a level where it uh, potential can cause some problems. If a human get overexposed to some ammonia, usually what they what they get in symptoms is headache, uh, difficulties in concentrating and being tired and having the feeling of the fatigue the feeling. Yeah. Next slide, please. OK, but we are going to skip all of the different routes of, of uh, where ammonia can damage. And in this presentation, we will only focus on the impact on the skin. And this could be, again, the skin of, uh, of the artery. It could be close to the TED canal, you know, where you are. The skin is extremely dependent on being flexible and capable of closing down and produce keratin to, to make a clot. So we don't have a transport of bacteria up in the artery just after milking. So, all this biochemical process is greatly dependent upon healthy uh, structure and skin. Uh, okay, before we move on with what is ammonia actually doing to the skin, I think it's important just to uh, let you know a few details. Uh, so we have, of course, the skin surface with dead uh, skin cells, and it forms, you know, as a physical barrier that prevents bacteria from going in and moisture from going out. But besides that, on top of the skin, we also have uh, we have the production of an oily secrete called sebum. Sebum is produced by uh, by uh, hair follicles and other follicles in general, and it is uh, composed of wax uh, and fatty oily uh, acids as well. So and also the smaller uh, organic acids like acetic acids. And that gives, in fact, a, a quite low pH value. Freshly produced sebum has a pH value of uh, 4.5, so quite acidic, but normally it is in, in the range uh, around 5 and 5.5. So what is the function uh, of this uh, sebum? There is uh, three major functions. One is to, to, uh, uh, to make it waterproof, to make the skin surface waterproof. And when doing this, we prevent uh, moisture from going out and the skin from drying out. Okay, the second function is to keep the skin flexible. So if sebum goes away, the skin dries out, flexibility goes away because it's not oily anymore, and there is a possibility of uh, cracks uh, that leads to an uh, easy route of infection for bacteria. And finally, the third 
the third mechanism for sebum is this low pH value. It is the organic acids because pathogenic bacteria, they hate organic acids. They cannot survive around organic acids. And if we go below four in pH value, 99% of all pathogenic bacteria will die. So if you can imagine, we have uh, the small black uh, dots <laughs> on this illustration being the bacteria, and they get into contact with the surface with sebum. What happens is that they are kind of caught in this vax, and they are exposed to organic acid, and that either kills them or at least inactivate them completely. And this is a very powerful first line defense against skin infections. Okay, then you take the, the, the cow, you put it into an animal environment with a lot of ammonia. What happens? Ammonia has a pH value of 13, very powerful in breaking down any acids. You know, an alkaline product could utilize an acidic product. So what happens is that ammonia breaks down very fast sebum and neutralizes all the organic acids. That exposes the, the skin, it dries out the skin, makes it less flexible, you have cracks, there is no inhibition of bacteria. What happens? You get an infection. So what I'm saying here is, yes, we want to kill the bacteria so we can avoid infection, but we also have to realize that bacteria, the pathogen bacteria, are producing ammonia as a chemical weapon to ease, make it more easy to infect. And we, if we can impair ammonia, take that away from the equation, bacteria will have a much harder time infecting over the skin. Next slide, please. Okay, so with that knowledge in mind, how can we prevent this negative effect of, of ammonia? And here I have a, a pH scale for you, uh, and I just want to, to you know, show pH value of different, uh, you know, natural uh, materials in general. First of all, let's look at the animal skin. I showed you before the pH value from 4.5 to 5.5. It is a bit too high on this scale. Don't uh, look for that. And what the interesting thing is before we move on is if we look at pH values in a natural environment in general, it is also down in the acidic uh, region. And we can see that next to uh, pH value in natural environment. And also if we look at the different bedding types, earlier in this presentation, we talked about wooden chips. You have uh, acidic acid in wooden chips and we have a pH value around five or something. And that is in itself, uh, to a certain degree inhibiting uh, bacteria. If we look at turf, it's even lower. We can go all the way down to three, and that is actually killing bacteria. So those bedding types we are using in, in animal production are, are in fact also uh, with a natural concentration of acids. Okay, uh, but what happens when we put the animals in the barn? We have the ammonia production, I told you that. That pushes the pH value up, and therefore, uh, we have the illustration of the stable floor from eight to nine. That is usually the pH value in, in, a, in a cow barn. And it can be as high as 10 actually, but the average is around this area. And that is of course a problem for the animal skin. It's too high according to uh, what, is, what is used to from nature. How can we move it? How can we lower the pH value? Well, if we use a limestone based product, uh, as something to add uh, as a hygiene powder product in calculus, for instance, we can see that uh, limestone has a pH value from 9 to 10. At this pH value, limestone is not corrosive. That's also the reason why it cannot kill anything. Uh, but again, it's too high. It will not support the skin, the low pH value of the skin. It will only make the negative impact of ammonia even worse because it adds to the alkaline condition in the bar. If we look at uh, another uh, product, hydrated lime, with an even higher pH value, around 13, this pH value is so high that it is corrosive and is in fact capable of killing bacteria. But at the same time, because the pH value is so high, it is corrosive and it breaks down animal skin very fast. So it may be that we kill some bacteria, but we get a very low resistance uh, on the animal skin. So therefore, it is not recommended at all to use a uh, hydrated lime. Okay, maybe you get more and more the picture. We need to uh, neutralize ammonia. We can only do that with something below 7 in pH value. We need acids because acids can neutralize 
alkaline products like ammonia. And that is the reason why we have chosen in Stelocyte F to use a high concentration of our, uh, mineral acids, uh, approximately 80%. So beside the biocidal active substances we have in the product, uh, chlorine, uh, chlorine and copper, we also have an 80% uh, concentration of highly active mineral acids. And that brings the pH value of Stelocyte F just below 4 at 3.5. And this is enough to actually kill petrogenes by the pH value alone. So we have the active substances, the copper and chloride, but we also have the acids. Then yeah, the, and a natural question is, of course, then, OK, but is uh, 3.5 not also causing problems for animal skin? Isn't it too acidic? Isn't it too low? And will also break down skin and cause problems? The answer is no. We need to go below pH value 2 in order to start irritating the skin with uh, pH value. So we are in a very safe distance from that with a pH value of uh, 3.5. Okay, next slide, please. Just finally, I what? Let's take the cow again. Let's let's take the cow cube code. Let's take the other. We would like Stelosan to be in the rear part of the of the cow base. We want the other to get into contact with the powder Stelosan F. We want Stelosan F to cover the skin of the other, the tits, the entrance, everything. Why is that? Because the product kills pathogens, pathogen bacteria, the product uh, attached to the skin surface and protects sebum from the bacteria and protects sebum from ammonia that breaks down sebum and makes the skin weak. So actually having this contact kind of um, gives a synergistic effects and help uh, the first line defense of, of, of the skin. So that is what we're looking for. Also, besides the effect we get directly in the environment itself. Next slide, please. And so now we are at the end of my presentation and I just have a final conclusion. Uh, I, I clearly recommend to use a natural bedding if you want to dry uh, uh, any uh, laying area in, in cattle production. Uh, I do not recommend any powder uh, hygiene products uh, if it is about drying. I don't even recommend Stelosan F if it is about drying. When, when instead, go for the natural bedding. But I do recommend Stelosan F if it is about killing. That makes good sense. Well, again, I want to emphasize Stelosan F is the only approved uh, powder biocide in Europe and the US. And finally, uh, the last point is related to the last slide I, sh I show. In, in any case, it's always a good idea to choose products that are low in pH value because the problem in animal, animal production is too high pH value because of ammonia. So we want to counteract that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jan, for your, for your presentation. Now we will look into the questions which has come up uh, during the webinar. And I will just go to the the section here. The first one is saying, how often do you recommend to use the product per week? If it is, uh, thank you for that question. If it is uh, car cubicles and we have a, let's say the pathogenic low, it's a normal average, you know, it's not in the high end or not in the low end, I would say a couple of times per week. Uh, but it varies a lot from farmer to farmer. Some farmers, uh, for instance, here in, in Denmark, they tend to, you know, they clean off the cow cubicles on a daily basis. They add new bedding, for instance, and they also uh, sometimes add Stelosan F on a daily basis. But we know from feedback from farmers that two times per week should be enough. Yes, thank you. And the next one is saying how is the value for slurry dry matter after separation compared to cutted straw and wood chips? The value? Yeah. How is the value for slurry dry matter? I, I, I wouldn't know. Sorry about that. That's, that's a question out of my league. Yeah, that's fair. 
Then we have one here. You said that Stelosan F is approved as a biocide in the EU and United States. Is it also registered other places? Yeah. Uh, so we have many countries worldwide. Uh, Stelosan F is sold in more than 50 countries worldwide. And, and most of the places it possesses a, a registration as a, as a disinfectant, what it's called in those countries. Yeah. Okay. The next one is uh, saying ammonia can decrease the activity of the immune system. Are there any scientific references available to support the statement? If so, could you please email it? Yes, there is uh, a lot of scientific evidence uh, that ammonia will, will uh, impact the health of animal, especially production results. Yes. And I will be able to find some of those studies and uh, send this. Yeah, so uh, yes, we can confirm that we will. And, and in general, we will collect all these uh, questions and answers and put them in a, a common file and send you to you together with the, with the presentation after the webinar. The next one, Jan, does Stalosan indirectly reduces pathogens due to absorption of liquids uh, moisture. In that case, why it needed to be registered as biocide and for what type of pathogens? Okay, so no, the, the mechanism of action for stelosan, uh, for the biocidal effect of stelosan is definitely not uh, anything with absorbing moisture at all. It is a direct uh, uh, antimicrobial effect and it is caused by uh, the concentration of uh, copper within the product and uh, chloride and the organic acids. And in fact, uh, we know today that if you, uh, if you have uh, copper and you combine it with acids at a low pH value, you can potentiate uh, the efficacy of that uh, 10 to 100 times. And we have done tests uh, which both both in moist and in dry conditions, and we see an equal biocidal effect in each case. Yes, thank you very much. The next one, your proposal is to use stelosan complementary to the bedding question. Together with your bedding, yes. You also have the possibility, of course, to use stelosan alone. If you are only going for, you know, the killing effect, uh, that's fine by me use stelosan and control the bacteria in that way. But if you also are looking for some a, a comfort, uh, you know, laying area, if you're looking for a nice dry environment, uh, it, it makes good sense to use a natural bedding. Also, it makes good sense if you need to add 50 grams of stelosan per cow bed in the rear part. I, I don't know if you have tried it, but it is a very thin layer. And of course, this thin layer of powder, stelosan or any other product is not capable of absorbing the level of moisture that comes into a cow bed daily. So drying, use the bedding types. Killing, use a product like stelosan. Yes. The next one, we often talk about the bedding, but how is it to use stelosan on the stable floor? Well, it's, it's definitely a possibility, uh, but I guess it's going to be quite expensive in the long run, right? But we know if you're using, for instance, um, stelosan on floor that is uh, slippery, you know, there is biofilm building up over time, we can actually remove this biofilm. So we will have an effect, but does it make sense in terms of cost? I'm not so sure. What's the water binding capacity of stelosan? Well, that's, uh, that's actually a good question. Uh, so. If you just uh, take a glass with water and you add some stelosan F, usually we see around 70 to 80 uh, milliliters of uh, water bound uh, per, per um, grams of, of stelosan. So it's not it's not a lot. Um, but if you combine uh, stelosan with water that needs to be absorbed and ammonia, it's a completely different situation because then suddenly a chemical reaction happens. And so, uh, well, I can't show you any slide or anything, but I'll try to explain my best. But in stelosan, we have phosphates and sulfates. And those phosphates and sulfate in a moist environment 
uh, will bind and neutralize ammonia. And what we get is that we take liquid water, we take ammonia water or in gas form, and we bind it to stellosan, and we get ammonium sulfate. And that means that water and ammonia are transformed into a solid. And when we do so, we see that the water binding capacity of stellosan goes up to, let's say, 300 percent. So uh, 300 milliliters per, per, per 100 gram of, of product. So, so if we need to talk about water binding capacity, uh, we should in fact look at what is the real life situation in an animal house. Uh, and that is that we both have ammonia and water present at the same time. So to, uh, 300 uh, milliliter per 100 gram of product. Yes, thank you. Can stellosan be used for other uses like pesticides? Yeah, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm not sure completely if I understand the question, but I will try my best. Um, stellosan is a product that is used while the animals are present normally. It is a product that is used in areas where animals are during a production uh, period, uh, a production cycle. Uh, and, and I guess that is 99% of all the use of the product is used like that. We do see that the uh, trucks are being blown with a, a garden blower to disinfect in all, all corners in the truck before transport of animals. We also see that stellosan are used in a, in, a, in a foot bath for humans before you enter, like say a swine production or a poultry production. Studies has been done where we compare the, the uh, biocidal effect of stellosan F to uh, Glutar uh, uh, and the high containing uh, powerful disinfectants, and we see uh, actually equal or even better effect with Stelzan F. So you can also use it kind of as a biosecurity in that case. But most of it is used in you know in areas where, where animals lay down, in, in you know farming accommodation for pigs, uh, broilers all over the floor, or for cattle in in uh, cow cubicles, uh, calf boxes, and hutches. Yes. Would you recommend to use the drying agent Stelosan dry together with Stelosan F? <laughs> that is a very good question. <laughs> I have to admit, because in this presentation, I have told everybody that they should not use a powder product if, if it is about drying. Uh, so I would say if if a, if a bedding, natural bedding material is not possible or not something a farmer like, Yes, I would recommend to make a mixture of uh, therosan dry. deeper and it has a nice absorption and has a, has a soft, uh, uh, comfortable structure. Uh, and so if we combine dry with F, we get the water binding capacity of, of therosan dry and we get the, the biocidal effect of therosan F and they kind of complement each other. They don't uh, break each other down. And therosan dry will bind uh, approximately 80 80 milliliters of, uh, of water per 100 gram of product. So it is definitely more compared to limestone at, uh, at 35 milliliters. Yes, the next one. How is it recommended to use Stelosan F in farms where the cows aren't in closed stables, but free in a very large barns and milked automatically by a robot? Yeah. Uh, that is always a bit of a challenge. I, I guess it is a barn with with a uh, deep heater, or or is it just a uh, okay? If it is a barn with a deep heater, a big uh, area where they can just walk around, uh, the the recommended dose of stelosan is 100 grams per square meters at least a couple of times per week. Um, yeah, so so that will be my answer to that. Yes, can we use it for calf? Uh, facilities, does it help for coccidia and cryptosporidia? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in, in general, our experience with Stelosan F in calf boxes and hutches is that we, we have a nice effect on both uh, cryptosporidium, coccidia, coronavirus, uh, salmonella. So all the common, you know, uh, pathogens that will cause diarrhea in scours, in, in calves, we see a very nice effect with, with uh, Stelosan F. And we have a long history of feedback, especially here in Denmark, where farmers are replying to us that it, it, it uh, provides a very nice effect in, in, in a case like that. And here what we do uh, to use it correctly is after 
If it is a calf box in a barn, normally you, you would not uh, power wash and disinfect. It's not possible because you will spread the infection all around. So what you normally would do is you will manually clean out uh, bedding and manure and everything. And, and afterwards you should add uh, just a covering layer of Stelosan F. Don't look too much into how much you're using. It's only a small area, but just make sure everything is covered. Bottom, sides, fence, everything. Then add bedding and then on top of the bedding, add approximately 100 grams per square meters, at least enough to, you can see the red uh, color all over. And then introduce the uh, calf, and then just on an ongoing basis, you go there and if you see diarrhea spots or anything, cover them as there's an F if you're not removing it. And in general, make sure that the bedding is always reddish in color. If it is not, add some more. Usually that will be, uh, uh, you know, two, three, four times per week. Yes. The next one, what kind of pathogen Stelosan F can kill? Well, that list is long. Uh, I would prefer to, to send that in an email uh, because, yeah, it's, it shoots. <laughs> yeah, we will do that. But it includes both fungus, bacteria, parasites and virus. Yeah. Aren't competitive products acidic to the same pH range like Stelosan F? Good question. No. For some strange reason, I have never seen any product on the market with a low pH value. I have a couple of years ago uh, come across a couple of products here in Denmark uh, because they listened to, to, to our presentations and our talk about the importance with low pH value. So I think they tried to, in, to a certain degree, to, to, to copy that idea. But what I realized was that what they do is they just take you know, a, a carrier like limestone or something else, and they add half or 1% of acetic acid or something else, just so it's possible to actually measure low pH value. But in real life, a small concentration like that com combined with an alkali product like limestone, it doesn't make sense. And I think the reason is, uh, that one of the reasons why we do not see this uh, very much is that the, the, the cost of raw materials are high. And so, so compared to limestone, the, the, the kilo price is at least 10 times higher. And that is, of course, a choice we have made in Vilofos. We want to have an effective uh, product with a high quality, and then we just have to pay more for the raw materials. Of course, it also makes there was an F in the higher end price price, but it's working good. And that's what is important. Yes. Next one, what effect does the product have on the natural flora and fauna of the cow housing as there are good bacteria present as well as bad? That's a good question, Ben. Uh, because when you have, you know, some of the soil bacteria and the, the beneficial bacteria for living creatures, at least for, for mammals, animals and humans, uh, a lot of those bacteria like lactic uh, bacteria, they produces acids. And a lot of the disease causing bacteria, they in fact produce ammonia. And if you have both bacteria colonies at the same area, what they will do is they will try and compete over whatever uh, substrate they can eat and grow and develop from. And, in, and of course, it makes sense if there is one good bacteria here and here's a disease causing bacteria, the disease causing bacteria wants to kill this. So there is more space and more to eat. And the same goes for the beneficial bacteria that may release lactic acid or another acid. And so they have this chemical warfare. Ammonia is toxic to, to the beneficial bacteria and acids are toxic to the pathogenic bacteria. In an animal barn, unfortunately, we have usually an overload of ammonia. And that means that we push, we help the pathogenic bacteria. We push this direction this way so it becomes more and more difficult for a natural environment of soil bacteria and other bacteria to survive. And that is also what destabilizes uh, the first line defense, for instance, on the skin of, of, of animals. So if we add stelosan, and we, first of all, stelosan is, is considerably more harmful to pathogenic bacteria over, for instance, soil bacteria. But when we add stelosan, we pushes this equation a bit in the right direction again. That, 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 is, uh, that is the idea. So what we see is that, that uh, Stelosan F is beneficial for the bacteria flora in, uh, in animal housing. 
Is it compatible to manure management practices? Can it be spread in land? Out on open land? Yeah. Yeah, so I guess the question is if, if you use it in a barn uh, and it goes into the manure, it will go out on the land afterwards or? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so what? Yeah, that's a, um, also a good question. Um, back in time, a very large study was done at one of the independent uh, uh, institutes here in uh, Denmark called Falun. And they here a professor, he made a, a test and investigation showing what happens when we add sterosan in the barn and it goes into the manure uh, pit and then it goes out on land. Do we add too much cover, for instance, or do we alter anything that may uh, cause problems? And the results of this, of this large 80 page uh, report uh, was that uh, we did not at all impact uh, on, on the, the soil conditions. We didn't see any increase in cover or other of, of the potential harmful ingredients. In fact, we saw an increase in uh, in uh, in, in the production results, we saw that we were able to grow a bit more, um, you know, corn or tomatoes or salad. Yes. Any more questions? Yeah, sorry, Anne. Okay. One here is asking what are the active ingredients in Stalosan for the drying effect? So there is a bit of anti caking in stelosan, uh, some silicates that will have some drying effect, but this effect is insignificant. Uh, the real drying effect of stelosan is caused by a direct chemical reaction. And so, so that means we are in fact breaking down water. We are not absorbing water just like we see with silicates, limestone or bentonite. They kind of absorb water, natural bedding will do as well, into cavities in between the powder structures. But for stenosan, it is a chemical reaction where we transfer liquid water and ammonia gas into a solid ammonium sulfate, which is a fertilizer. And this process is irreversible. Okay, so so that is the that is the primary way that uh, stenosan if will. Um, remove water. Also, if you lower bacterial activity, you will also lower the formation of water. Okay. Can biogas gas plants use the manure after Stalosan F? Yes. It is a question I get often and it makes good sense to ask this question because if we can kill to a certain degree bacteria, we may also uh, impact the bacteria that are, that are producing biogas. Um, also, it is well known if we lower the pH value of any manure before it goes to uh, the biogas plants, the production of biogas will be lower. Uh, so I do once in a while uh, have a contact from the biogas plants around Denmark and other places. And we we are just not adding enough stelosan to be able to influence anything in, in terms of killing bacteria and uh, lowering the pH value in a big mass like manure in manure pits. I mean, if a cow is getting 50 grams per square meter, meaning per cow cubicle, let's say two times per week, and this cow will itself release 70 kilo uh, of manure on a daily basis. So then it's 490 kilo in a week where we add 100 grams of stelosan per cow. And that, that differences in concentration will make stelosan so low in concentration in the manure, it's not possible to measure anything. And therefore, we do not see any impact on uh, biogas production. OK, thank you very much, Jan. That was the last uh, questions. Thanks for, for asking us all these uh, relevant uh, questions. Um, and now it's uh, time for closing the meeting. We hope that the webinar was useful and uh, has provided some insight and knowledge about hygiene powder products. And the uh, last comment from my side is that we will arrange more webinars in the future. The first one will be uh, in two weeks, 
also on a Thursday, the 28th of January, concerning how to avoid digital dermatitis and secure healthy hooves. Again, thank you very much for participating. Hope to see you again. Bye and stay safe.